All right, you don't hear this very often. You remember the guy who put up in excess of $25 million to go on uh, you know, this Jeff Bezos rocket uh, to the stars? Uh, he, he canceled his plans. He said he, it, you know, it was a, a calendar conflict. I, I, I kid you not. I, you know, I, I realized I have a conflict, can't make it to space this time. I guess they're, they're keeping his dough, saving it maybe for a future flight. But in his place will be an 18-year-old, Oliver Damon. So on that flight, if all goes as planned, you will have 18-year-old uh, Oliver and 82-year-old Mary Alice uh, Wally Funk, as they call her. She was one of the Mercury 13 women. They didn't give women much of a shot at space travel in those days. Uh, but she's getting her shot uh, next week. So oldest person, youngest person, richest person in, on the same flight. Let's get the read uh, right now on all of this with Dr. Leroy Chow, the former NASA astronaut, ISS commander, International Space Station. Commander, great to have you. What do you think of all this? Oh, well, this is a very interesting mix, as you pointed out. We're going to have... Uh, Jeff Bezos, the, the richest man on the planet, and his brother. And then we're going to have the youngest uh, person to go fly in space at 18, and now the, the oldest as well at 82. So uh, uh, pretty good uh, mix for, for PR, I suppose. Yeah, you know, um, I don't know how you feel about this, but th this guy is still anonymous, the millionaire who it was actually $28 million, uh, He put up for what would essentially be an 11, 12-minute joyride. I, I, I don't want to trivialize it. It's a big deal. Um, but how do you have a scheduling conflict come up? Like, I could just think, all right, going into space, but I have well, that damn dentist appointment. I mean, um, what the heck? Yeah, well, that caught me by surprise, too. Uh, you know, hard to imagine that at NASA say, hey, I, I can't go to the shuttle now because uh, I got a conflict here, a scheduling conflict. So uh, certainly uh, it sounds a little bit odd, especially if you're putting up $28 million. Maybe uh, Maybe right. this fellow had second thoughts or something. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm thinking of you, and you're a hero in my mind, but of course you never say that, nor do a lot of your colleagues. Um, but you, you must have missed a lot of family events, birthdays and all, your time at the International Space Station. All. Did you ever say, oh, guys, I completely forgot, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, it's my mom's birthday next week. I, I, I got to leave. But how does that happen? I, I know I'm belabored, right. but I, I, I yeah, can't get you over know. <laughs> Yeah, of course, you know when your mission's going to be, so, you know, you're going to miss a lot of those things. But really, you miss right. a lot during training. For example, training for my International Space Station flight. It was three and a half years of training. Half of that time, wow. about half of that time, I was in Russia. So certainly missed a lot of things like that. And uh, now never crossed my mind to say, hey, I can't go train right now because I've got, uh, you know, a scheduling conflict. But I guess if you're a billionaire, uh, you're used, not used to being told no. <laughs> I guess. Uh, you know what, Commander, and, and again, I'm pushing this obnoxiously, but uh, you, you talk about just your three and a half years of training for that mission, to say nothing of your education and your science and every, all the background uh, to, to get you to that point. And these people slap down some money, and they're astronauts. Uh, at, at, at some level, at some level, that's got to that's bother you. Well, you know, I look at it this way. It was kind of like when President Reagan was, was given an honorary knighthood, or if somebody gets an honorary PhD, you know, the experts say, yeah, okay, that's fine, but it would be highly inappropriate for those people to actually use those titles. And so I kind of look at this the same way. You know, you want to you wanna fly to space, you know, you're a billionaire, you want to be called a, an, an astronaut, that's fine, but, uh, you know, I hope you don't go around representing yourself as a professional. So, because uh, the difference, as you pointed out, is pretty huge. <laughs> it, it is pretty huge. I, I'm just wondering, I'm, I, I was intrigued when Branson returned to, to Earth, terra firma, I should say, just on the ground. Um, there's a certification process that goes on, right, that, where you're certified or, or there's something that officially states you are among the, what, fewer than 500 individuals, human beings, who from 60 on years plus have ventured into space. Is that true? Are you obviously part of a unique club? I didn't know, uh, you know there was a whole process to it. Yeah, I'm not, I haven't heard about the certification, and certainly there's no certification for, for professionals. What it might be, he might be claiming uh, some kind of an aviation record through the, the FAI, the Federal uh, Aeronautique uh -huh. International. And so if he's trying to claim that uh, some kind of a record, then they would need to certify the flight that it did indeed go as high as they said it did and, you know, all, all those other factors. So that's possible that they're trying to, to say that they made some kind of a record. 
Well, I still have you, and then the producer's going to kill me, but I so enjoy talking to fellow heroes like you, a great astronaut. But uh, <laughs> I always amuse myself thinking I am an astronaut commander indulging. But um, th this, this whole issue about whether you're really into space, uh, whether you're at 50-plus miles, 60, 65 miles, what is it? Because I think the Bezos people were ribbing uh, Branson's people. You know, technically, sure. we're going higher. What's the deal on that? Well, the deal was, uh, you know, the Virgin Galactic spacecraft can't quite get to the 62-mile, what is called the Von Karman line. And the history on that is that back in the 1950s, 1960s, when the United States was, we were flying X-15 flights, and some of those pilots went above 50 miles in altitude. And so the United States government set that boundary, said, hey, 50 miles is the boundary of space. And if you flew a vehicle above that, you get astronaut wings and you get to be called an astronaut. Uh, and then some years later, an international group decided that 100 kilometers was a nicer, rounder number, called that the Von Karman line, and that works out to 62 miles. So Virgin Galactic's craft can't quite get to that 62. Uh, Jeff Bezos' craft will go over 62. So that was the, uh, that was the, the ribbing between the two of them. All right. Well, we'll see, because he will technically go higher, but we'll see on the 20th, right? I, that's the 52nd anniversary of Neil Armstrong, <laughs> Apollo 11, all of that good stuff. Commander, uh, a real treat having you. I appreciate it. Oh, pleasure. Thank you.